Hello everyone and welcome to Pokey Poke. Uh, this is the game I've been making in Game Maker for uh, a very long time. It's been taking a very long time for a whole lot of reasons, not least of which is uh, I'm also a full-time YouTube content creator <laughs> who has to make videos, uh, video tutorials showing everyone else how to make games. Um, it can be hard to find time to work on games for yourself. Um, but nonetheless, this is the project I've been working on for a very long time and what I want to start doing is some devlogs, um, talking about the game, how it's going, the general state of things, and and so on. You know, people do this kind of thing a lot. I'm sure you get the idea. Um, I've done this kind of thing before, but um, usually talking about like specific elements of the game rather than just sort of giving general updates that I can um, kind of you know throw together just by playing the game for 10 minutes and talking about what's new. And so I want to do that as a way of creating some content that's a little bit easier for me to make in between working both on the game and working on my videos because you know time is very precious. So the more things I can put together um, in a quick space of time, the better. Um, and uh, yeah, so while I'm making this sort of stuff, um, while you're watching it, I'm probably working on longer stuff, um, tutorial videos and so on. But anyway, um, before I can really, th there's been so much done on the game over the last like four years or however, I've lost track of how long I've been working on it. Um, but um, um, there's been so much done that honestly this first video I'm mostly just going to be talking about the basics of the game and sort of catching you all up. Maybe even the first couple of episodes because I want to talk about the world design and the general ideas behind the game so that when I talk about new stuff we've added to the game you've got any context and understanding for what the heck I'm talking about. So anyway yeah this is Pokey Poke. As you can see you're a girl you crash landed on an island and you've kind of you know the only way you could kind of come was down this cave where you find a spear. When you get this spear uh, you can use it to climb. And, and jump and climb and bounce and all kinds of things. And when you first get the spear, this ghost shows up. It kind of like shows you, you know, kind of the very basic idea of how to play the game. It's like, oh, you can, you can like stab the, oh, you can, oh, you can do that, and you can like kind of move around. And you can, oh, you can climb up the wall. That's kind of cool. And that this is over here. I'm like, well, I did that to get up there, so surely I can do that to get up here. And I can go, I can go get, I can go get this thing. And then you find gems, and they have names, and they talk to you. And that's basically the whole concept of the game. Um, you use a spear to kind of explore this island, try and find a way off the island because you know you crashed here. Um, but also hopefully be lured into trying all kinds of difficult things in order to find cool new shiny gems and see what they have to say. Um, that's really it, that's the whole idea. Every single gem in the game is optional, like you do not have to collect a single gem in order to beat the game. Um, you'll have to ignore this little 8 thing in the corner, it's just a placeholder for showing how many gems we've got, it's just a thing we're playing around with. Um, this is all very work in progress, all kinds of things that... Um, I'm sure I'll get into as we do more of these kind of videos um, that I'm, I'm working on and I'm changing around and so on. Um, but yeah, also not just dirt, but there's the rock and stuff that you can bounce off of. Um, if you watch my streams on Pokebook, a lot of this is just going to be very basic, but like I say, I'm just, I need to catch you all up and provide you the context of the game. Um, and despite kind of, you know, having the opportunity to learn about the, the rock stuff here, like generally when people come to here they have no idea what to do next. The the idea is you're meant to hit the floor with the uh, the spear and bounce up as a way to get up there. And I'll sort of show you that because it's an important concept to understand. I need to teach you it early. But people do not, like, like they, they run they hit this and they're like, oh, I don't I don't understand, how do I, how do I get up? And they sit and they, they just look at this ridge and they just feel really stuck. Um, you, you might think it seems obvious now I've shown you that, but it really isn't. Like even if people get the idea they can bounce off this, they might even imagine that hitting this sends them up. They don't know that yet, but they might imagine it, but they don't necessarily know how high it sends you without trying it for themselves. So it's actually surprisingly difficult, I found, for people to put together that that, that is how that works. So uh, if they get stuck there, instead they're probably going to get this gem, because why would you not get this gem? It's right there. And then this gem... Uh, um, you'll notice that some of these the, the text boxes here don't necessarily look great the way they zoom out. Um, like they, they don't like keep they're not very well synced with the text. We're still experimenting, so we've only just added it. So if you played the demo, there's a demo on Steam you can play. It's very outdated now, but it is there. Um, the gems used to just give little one-line descriptions of like what they were. They were kind of like Mario Odyssey moons type of thing. Um, and now they actually have dialogue. They kind of behave a bit more like sort of the dragons from Spyro. If you remember getting like the statues in that game and they, they talk to you and give a little bit of exposition or whatever. So some of these just give you like a bit of story. Some of them give you little hints and tutorials and stuff. And, and this one, yeah, just tells you about like how, tells you like bouncing on rock does different stuff. Here, watch this ghost. And then I kind of show you with the ghost, um, how, um, the bouncing of that works. I'll just watch that one more time. The ghost kind of like shows up there, aims the spear down, 
and you, you see it like the character looks like exactly like you except doesn't like have a face which is kind of weird and uh you, <laughs> you and yeah so you get the idea that you can do exactly what it is doing and it points the spear down does that and you're like oh, okay i get it um so that helps teach people that this little section here rather than just having like straight dirt to climb up i made it just sort of uh, and I do this whenever there's kind of a linear climbing section without much other challenge involved. Is like, um, I'll have it like kind of go left to right like this in a kind of a zigzag, just because it's way more fun. <laughs> I found to just like grab and, and just move dynamically from side to side. That as a move is just so much more interesting than just like straight ascending for the most part. Um, anyway, you come all the way up to here. And then we learn the other thing that you can do with a spear, and there's no unlocks in the game, there's no power unlocks or anything like that, um, except for technically this moment, because I don't allow you to do spear throw until you've seen this ghost, um, just because I, I, I want to avoid it confusing people if they accidentally press the button and like, oh, you can throw, what? Um, so just to sort of, you know, pace out that learning or whatever, you're only able to do that here. Um, we usually have some text on screen that says that you press the right mouse button to throw, and you press the left mouse button to stab. Um, but um, I'm reworking how I'm going to show that, so we don't have that at the moment. But yeah, the ghost shows up, shows you can throw, maybe this. And like I said, there's no other powers or unlocks in the game. You've just got stabbing, you've got throwing, and how the spear interacts with different surfaces. For one thing, if you throw into a grabbable surface like the dirt, um, the spear stays where it is. And if you run into it or jump into it, you actually do like a, a special move, like a, a vault if it's vertical. And if it's horizontal, you do like a super jump. Um, so, so that's pretty cool, and you can also do the vault on the ceiling as well, like that. Um, but I mean, you learn those things, like ghosts teach you some of those things as you carry on through the game, but you can kind of accidentally discover them for yourself as well, just after the point at which the throw is unlocked. But other than that, nothing, there's no power-ups or anything like that, no other things that you get in the game. Um, speaking of which, you might come to here and you might assume that there's going to be, because you'll see this and be like, how, how do I, how do I do that? Or how do I get over there? Um, and it's not too hard to put together, but like, you know, you can bounce off of surfaces and you can do that. But it's an opportunity for you to work that out for yourself. If you don't, um, and you're just like, you don't know how to get over here, but you assume there must be a way because of that, and you might think, well, maybe there's just a power-up or something I get later, maybe I unlock double jump or something like that. You can just carry on, um, up here, and you just follow the linear path, and later on you get explicitly taught, uh, the move you need to do here, which is just, yeah, you hit the side of that, and then you can, like, fly across the gap. Um, and then you might think, oh, cool, when you learn that, and you can come back down here and do this later. Um, but um, not putting the explicit tutorial here is a nice way to let people kind of work that out for themselves as well. Um, so as, as a little opportunity there, I really like how that kind of area of the game kind of flows. Anyway, you come into here, and you basically, this is like an advanced version of what you just did. Uh, all these, tri these statues that exist all contain little kind of mini levels where we can just sort of explore um, particularly interesting moves or difficult techniques and things like that. Um, and you get these like green gems for doing them. And yeah, so you do a couple of really cool little uh, bouncy moves there. They're quite intimidating, like they look intimidating. They're actually, like that one's actually not nearly as hard as it looks. Um, and uh, so I, I find it's really satisfying for a lot of people the first time they get that. I mean, it, it, it's obviously it varies. People's skill in this game varies enormously because it's such a weird control system. Some people really intuitively get the hang of it. Other people it takes a lot longer. Really difficult game on controller. It does work on controller, but it's very different. It's a very different experience. Most things are just harder on controller. Some things are a little bit easier. I mean, I suppose that's true of most games, but like just really in this game, quite difficult to find the parity there. Um, so first and foremost, this is like aimed as a Windows, you know, mouse and keyboard game. Um, but uh, we are whilst still working on controller stuff because it would be cool to add that. Um, obviously for other platforms and stuff later on. Um, there are secret walls and stuff like this in the game. You come through, oh, there's a gem over there, but I'll, I'll leave that leave that for now. Um, there's loads of those all over the place, so you, know, you can keep your eye out for cool secrets. Come up here, you press this button, um, this door opens up, and that's the linear path leading onwards. But you might obviously also think, well, what's, what's over to the left? Um, and you, you can come this way. There's all kinds of just little branching paths and stuff like that, designed to kind of lure you off and and just, just present things. Just be just off screen. If you go just off screen, there's an opportunity to get a cool thing. And uh, you have to do quite a little tricky move to like, yeah, get, get this, um, and they've got some text or whatever. Um, I actually flicked that one out first try, but that's actually quite, it's, it's, it's harder than you think, actually, to go from there to that without, like, falling far enough to hit the spikes. Quite tricky, and then all these spikes go away. 
Um, there's, yeah, the red gems in general are slightly harder to get and also generally harder to find. Um, that's probably one of the easier ones to end up like spotting for the first time, sort of introducing the concept of red gems. Um, I love this shot. I love the, just the general reveal of this as you come up into here. You also learn a new mechanic there with the with the rocks. When you come into here, I just really love this reveal in the valley. I think uh, Ink Splat My Eyes did a really good job on this. This particular, just this this scene in general just looks really cool. And as I was talking about before, I'm going to hit this button and a ghost is going to show up and it's going to show me like, oh, that's how you, that's, that's how you get across there. Uh, that's kind of cool. Because we already know about buttons from the when we threw one earlier and so on, and you know, we might not know how to get across here. That's going to show you. Um, and then you might think, oh, that's probably how you get across that other thing, and you now know that move, and you could go back and do that and backtrack. You go up here, which is a branching path, leads to some quite difficult stuff and some interesting trials and so on. Or you can carry on this way, which is the sort of non-linear, uh, the linear, sorry, um, path of least resistance throughout the game. Um, I guess most of the challenge in the game is hidden around corners and it's designed to like, you know, like I say, every gem is optional, um, and, uh, like, the linear straightforward path, like I'm walking through here, doesn't actually have that much challenge in it. It does have some moments, like, that are designed in a way to kind of, um, throw a little bit of challenge in your face for making forward progress to, as a way to encourage you to kind of explore around, try other trials, learn and get better at the game, um, but for the most part, just going from start to finish in the game, like other than this section, I guess it's actually quite difficult, is mostly um, quite easy. Um, oh, I've just fallen into a new area here that we that's barely even been designed, um, so it uh, doesn't look very pretty at the moment, although there's a, there's a cool little gem thing over here. Um, I don't want to spoil too much of that though, so I'm going to press R, oh, we'll come back. This is the dev room that exists, where I just sort of warp around. Um, to different areas of the game. If I just go back to the beach here, though, this is where we started off. And we'll just wake up there. I'll just debug and give myself the spear. And like I say, you can come back here, like after you've opened the doors, and you can backtrack. You can get this gem. It even specifically talks about backtracking. Most of the gems, their personalities are all just like they're like try-hard gamers who just really want to encourage you to like uh, explore the island and do difficult, hard things. Um, that's like, that's their whole thing, but as I say, you don't have to get any of them. The whole idea of the game is to just try and encourage you to try difficult things out, um, get better at stuff, and really experience that kind of like, you know, f feeling of challenging yourself and getting better at something, uh, without feeling forced to, you know, like, um, designing it so the ending of the game is hopefully going to feel almost a little bit unsatisfying if you just sort of go straight from start to finish. Um, as a way to encourage you to just, you know, just hang out in the game and, and try and, and find what else is out there, you know? Um, there's this whole thing that you can, like, climb up. As I say, most of the challenge is, like, in areas like this where just, uh, um, you don't have- anywhere that's, like, optional, you know? Anywhere you don't have to go is where I've, like, put a lot of the challenges. There's some stuff with the water as well, you can kind of come into water here, there's a whole- whole section under here where you can you kind of, like, cling underneath and so on. All kinds of stuff. But anyway, I think that's probably enough for our just first episode here of just sort of <laughs> introducing Pokemon. There's so much to say. I could literally just sit and talk about everything I've done on this game for hours and hours and hours. Um, which is kind of why I want to start making these videos, because then it gives me an outlet for that. And uh, it's just quite quick and easy to produce, because I just sit here and play the game for 10 minutes. Pretty cool. Anyway, thanks very uh, much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed that. I found that useful. If there's anything you want to know about Pokepoke or in general, just anything you want me to talk about future devlogs, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much if you watched all the way through. That's very, very cool. Um, thank you to my patrons for what I do. And I'll catch you all next time.